Hi, I'm Bonnie Francis, and I'm here with Tim Alan, and he's at Chesapeake Hearing Centers, isn't it? Centers? Yes. And they're going to be out at the 4-H Fair May 19th outside of Centerville here in Queen Anne's County for the Senior Summit. So tell us a little bit about your business first, and then we'll talk about the summit. Okay. Well, Chesapeake Hearing Centers is the oldest private practice audiology group in the state of Maryland. Okay. We've been doing this since 1975. So we're celebrating our 42nd year. Wow. Uh, we have expanded to seven locations across the state, ranging from Columbia down to Ocean Pines. But we have two locations close uh, in Queen Anne's County, one in Kent Island and another down in Talbot County in Easton. Okay. So we service the Queen Anne's County, Talbot County, Caroline County population very well from those right. locations. So tell us how a person, what, you know, if they feel they need to get an appointment, how do they get in touch with you? What's phone number, or email, or both? Or We're pretty easy to get a hold of, actually. We have a uh, toll-free number, 800-647-6428 uh, is our toll-free. We also have a website, helpyourhearing.com. Okay. And if you log in to helpyourhearing.com, you will be get a pop-up that you can reach out directly to our office with your name and phone number and someone will call you. Okay. You know, in this day and age of phones will ring all the time, sometimes it's difficult to get through to our number. So if you send us an email, we'll call you back rather quickly. Okay. Uh, we're open 8.30 to 4.30 each day. So in the email, received during those times, we'll get a phone call during those times. If we get an email after hours, we'll call you first thing in the morning. Is it Monday through Friday? Yes, we're a Monday through Friday business. Okay. Uh, even when we were closed for that one little winter storm we had, I was at home getting emails and calling patients. Right. So I was setting people up for appointments while I was at home, which is the wonder of, of the new world we live in with connectivity right. was I was able to work from home. Right. Now, if a person makes an appointment, um, how much time does something like that, like their first visit, how much time would something like that take? Well, we go through a four-step process. We sit down with the patient first and we interview the patient to find out what their concerns are and why they're here to, to see us today because sometimes they're there because they were told to go or they're there because they actually have a concern of their own. Uh, once we determine where they are, we do a physical examination of the ear to make sure that there's no physical impediment, uh, wax or deformity, something like that. Then we test their hearing. Once we test the hearing, we sit down at, for the fourth step with the results and go over the results. Now, is that done all in one sitting? One all in one sitting, yeah. Okay. We, and depending on it, we. For a patient who's never had their hearing tested before, we'll allot an hour and a half for that appointment. Okay. And it's a no charge consult to come in. We really have found that in the years that we've been in business, that people will be turned off from seeking hearing care if someone's gonna charge them up front. So what we like to do is bring people in and answer their questions. A lot of patients that come and see us actually have no issue whatsoever. They may have wax or maybe someone else that truly has the communication issue. So it's always nice to know that you can come in, get a, uh, Evaluated. an evaluation and, and, and a good opinion on where you stand and, and move on from there. Okay. If someone, as far as driving to the location, where do they come? Where is the well, Ken we're, Island? Well, we're located on Ken Island. We're located in the Chesapeake Bay Business Park. Okay. Uh, ample parking there. It's right off Log Canoe Circle. Everyone pretty much knows where that is right off uh, Route 8 right. north. Um, Easton, we've got the best landmark going. We're in front of the Walmart. Okay. Everyone in Easton knows where the Walmart is. We sit on the corner of Elliott and Dover Road. Uh, our neighbor across the street is Spurry Tire. Right. And everyone in the Easton either knows Walmart or Spurry Tire or right. knows them both. So we're pretty easy to find. And we're on the first floor there. Okay. So tell us what 
people can expect if they stop at your table out at the Senior oh, Summit okay. May 19th? Well, first, I'll say hello to them. Yeah. I'll be there. My wife will be in the, in the back screening hearing. Uh, Tell them how that works. Because well, because that's that's it's kind of hard being indoors like that and people coming through and all talking. So you really can't evaluate with the background noise. Right. We, we do not evaluate at all. We screen right. and it is a pass fail screen. If you pass, you've got pretty good hearing to be able to hear in a noisy environment. We do have a room that's right off the exhibit hall. So it is quieter, but it is not quiet. It is not ideal. Right. If you fail, a screening at the uh, senior, senior summit, right. we will give you a chance to come into our office to get rechecked in a quiet environment. There is no charge for that. We can bring you into either Easton or Ken Island and check your hearing in a, in a more ideal surrounding. Right. But there we will be supplying information. Uh, we always come uh, equipped with information about hearing loss, uh, hearing aids, we're, we're more than willing to talk to people and answer all their questions that they come uh, prepared to ask. A, a common question is tinnitus or the noise that people hear in their ears and we can discuss that and options that exist to help you with. A big thing nowadays more and more seniors are using smartphones or mm -hmm. smart devices, uh, you know, the, the tablets and bigger smartphones. And there is connectivity with your hearing aids to these devices that doesn't require any additional equipment. Oh, and okay. that's been a game changer for a lot of people. Grandparents love to Skype. They love seeing their grandchildren face to face on that tablet. And if you have the ability to stream that volume or oh, the signal yeah. directly into yeah. your hearing aids, it's so much clearer, and it, it is a life changer for a lot of people. It, it has caused them to have much better communication. So if you could give us a number, how many different options might be out there for someone that needs a hearing aid? Are there different degrees of hearing aids and all that kind of stuff? Well, I can't put a something? number on it okay. because everyone's unique. Okay. N no different than the, my fingerprint. Everyone's hearing loss is slightly unique. There's always unique challenges to everyone's hearing loss. Uh, if you had two people with the exact same hearing loss, the exact same hearing aid would not work because people are different and right. there's variations. How someone perceives the sound may be slightly different than the person who has the technical identical hearing loss. So how you treat it is differently. That's where computers have really changed it. Uh, in the last 25 years, we went from using screwdrivers to adjust hearing aids to nowadays, we can even adjust them with an iPhone. Um, wow. And everyone, there's so many variations to the computer programming that goes into a hearing aid that you really can match everyone's unique abilities and desires. Right. So someone gets a set of hearing aids, we usually have an, uh, a way to program them to start. We'll bring a patient back in two weeks and sit down and go, okay, so how was it? And they'll say, well, it was great, but in church I had a, a dilemma with this. Right. Or when I was at the club, I had a dilemma with that. And we can tweak it a little bit, send them out the door for a couple more weeks or longer or shorter, depending on their experience. And we can adjust and adjust better yet. A year down the line, maybe their hearing has changed. Well, you know, in the old days, like these, you know, if my vision changes, I need new glasses. Right. There's no getting around it. But with hearing aids, if your hearing changes, you can reprogram the hearing aid. And as long as all the mechanical parts of the hearing aid are still working well, right. we can reprogram and reprogram and reprogram as many times as needed. Now they just have different styles of how you see them, like how they are positioned on the ear. Are there different? There are different styles and the technology uh, can be the same in the different styles, but there's advantages and disadvantages to each style. Uh, a lot of people come in and they go, oh, I don't want it to be seen, so I want one that sits really far down in my ear, which works very well for some people, 
but not all people. Uh, the problem there exists with the shape of the ear canal. Yes. Uh, the other problem is, is if it's in your ear all the time, it's exposed to heat and moisture from your body, so there's repair issues. The style that really changed the industry as a whole is what's called the receiver in the canal. And it's a very small BTE ear that, or hearing aid that'll sit behind your ear with a wire that'll come and, and stick a small receiver inside your ear. Most people that wear those hearing aids, you can't even tell that they have them on because the wire is, is clear. Right. So it doesn't even show up unless you really look at their ear. They have more durability because this is a device that's built, you know, it's not contained in, it's small, it's lightweight. How does that affect if someone's talking on a phone or something that like that? It works very well because it doesn't fill your ear canal. Okay. It just is a smaller one. So you can actually talk and hear pretty well using a phone. And of course, as I said before, if you have a cell phone it and it's be, properly yeah. equipped, yeah. it's the right technology, it can stream right into your cell phone. The other thing is manufacturers, and this is very important in this area, is moisture. We're a very humid climate. Mm -hmm. yes. um, in the old days, we would be getting hearing aids out of Minnesota or at one point we were using a manufacturer out of Utah and they didn't have the humidity that we do, do in Maryland. They have combated that and have come up with moisture protection. So these hearing aids can almost sit underwater. Um, they, they can get pretty wet and keep on working, which is very good. We never recommend taking a hearing aid into the water, but if they do accidentally get wet, rainstorm, oops, I forgot they were on and jumped right. in the pool, common problem, uh, or I'm on the boat and I dove in, oh. Uh, oh. common problem in this area. <laughs> It's not as fatal as it used to be. You know, we still, there's drying devices we can use, but for the most part, the hearing aids will hold up. Now, the hearing aids come off at night, just like a pair yes, of glasses? Yes, just like and, the glasses. And, and I know it's a concern. Some people go, but if, if something happens at night, how can I see or how can I hear? Which is the same. If I take my glasses off at night, when I get up in the middle of the night, I may stumble around a little bit, but I do get around okay without my glasses. Without your hearing aids, yes, you will lose that ability to hear at night, but there are other devices. If you need an alarm clock, well, there are alarm clocks that have big flashing lights on them. Your phone ringing, you can get devices to help you with that. Right. But it is best to take the hearing aids off at night, uh, open the battery compartment, and we give away, we have these great little dry jars that you can put the hearing aid in at night and it screws tight uh -huh. because your pets love your hearing aids. Oh my, I didn't even think about uh, that. You know, cats will play with oh, them yeah, and hide is, them. Yeah. Uh, dogs will chew them up. And I don't know, my theory is, is that the hearing aid might be making a high pitched noise, uh -huh. that, but I think they just like that it smells like the, the human and they chew them up. Uh, and the hearing aid batteries can be dangerous for the pets. They, they could be fatal. So we want to keep these out of the, the reach of the pets or small children, things right. like that. So these jars are great. They're plastic, so you can travel. They're TSA compliant. So if you have it in your walk, you know, carry on luggage, they're not going to pull you aside. Um, so, so it's a good convenience. But they got to be able to change batteries. Do most of them have to have the batteries changed in them? Yeah, they, there are some aids out there now that are rechargeable. Okay. Which rechargeable is great, but the only dilemma is if your battery dies, you need to recharge it. No different than a cell right. phone. When the cell phone dies, you, you got to come up with a place to plug it in. We when our patients get hearing aids from us, we give them batteries to use for three years. We'll okay. give them a supply. So batteries really have never been an issue with our patients. As they get better at the rechargeables and the rechargeables have uh, more uh, life to them, that could be a, a way to go in the future. Right. But right now they're still, it's at the beginning phase of rechargeables. So, we really don't deal much with rechargeable batteries.
but they are available. Right. It's an option. It's an option. And there's a lot of options. That's a, the yeah. beauty of hearing aids is, you know, bring me 100 people into a room and we have 101 different desires. And, yes. and we can handle every single desire. We really can with the hearing aids and the technology today. We can do whatever we can for someone to, to improve their life because we truly believe that better communication you know, leads to a better life. Yep. All right. Well, we thank you for coming in. Well, Hopefully thank you. Hopefully people will stop by the booth. I and, hope they come by. I, see your wife and find out. See me. I'll be out there. I, I've got some great giveaways this year. I have a beautiful golf umbrella that I'm giving away. We have several of those. So stop by. We'll, we always have good giveaways. So please come visit us. We'll be yeah. there looking to, to Senior meet Senior Summit, people. May 19th. Come Absolutely. Good See seeing you, you again. Thank you very much.